Hi everyone, welcome to Bad Fashion YouTube channel. My name is Eunice. So today we're going to be learning how to make this A-shaped flared gown you saw on the thumbnail with gathers at the down part and then a flare sleeve with band. I hope this is what you would like to learn. Kindly stay tuned while we get right into the tutorial. Material I'll be using, I'll be using this Mikado satin. And this is the wrong side of my Mikado satin. So I'm going to fold over to the wrong side. And to determine the amount of fabric to fold, you're going to use how wide you want the A shape to be. That's it now. So now my client's hip measurement is 15. 15, when you divide 50 by 4, that will give us 12.5. So I want the A shape to be extra 5 inches. So 12.5 plus 5 inches, that will be 17.5. So I'll be folding over 17.5. Okay, I haven't folded my fabric. The first thing I'll do is to draw the shoulder line. I'm using a school chalk so that I don't stain the fabric, considering that it's white. Mm -hmm. So I hope we can see my lines clearly. I'll try as much as possible to bring the camera close. Okay, so this is the shoulder line. So on this shoulder line, I'm going to mark three inches and then eight inches. So after marking three inches, eight inches, I'll come down by one inch and then slant it to the shoulder, to the three inches. That's to three inches up to the shoulder line. So now the shoulder measurement I'm working with is 17. 17 divided by 2, that will give me 8.5. So 8.5 plus half inch for joining my sleeve. So that will bring me to 9 inches. So can you see? So now meaning that the shoulder slant will actually have to extend to my 9 inches. So the armhole measurement I'm working with is 9.5. The bust is 50. When you divide 50 by Stem, stem by 6 plus 1.5 that will give you like 9.5 don't give you 9 point something 6 something but i'm going to be using 9.5 so here is my 9.5 here coming down from the shoulder slant 9.5 so i'll come here to confirm the same nine inches measurement i have here which is the shoulder measurement divided by two plus half inch so that's nine inches i'll bring it down here too I hope you can see my chalk clearly. So I'm just going to connect my line. The essence of coming down to confirm that nine inches is to have a straight line. So basically, for this outfit, what we need is the bust measurement and then the hip measurement. Okay, that hip measurement, whatever is your hip measurement or how flared or how A-shaped you want the gown to be. So the hip measurement may not even come into play. But in this case, I said that the hip measurement of my client is 50. 50 divided by 12, that will give me, and by 4, sorry, that will give me 12.5. So that 12.5, I decided to add 5 inches to it. So now, if you're sewing for a slim person, you may not have to use her hip measurement because if you use her hip measurement, it may not give you the A shape, that full A shape that you want. But in this case, that's why I'm using this. So determine how wide you want your A shape to be. So in this case, I have said that the A shape I want to have, I want to have 17.5 inches at the hem. Okay, that's for the that's for the width now now for the length of the fabric the length of the gown i'm making is 45 inches i remember that we have gathers at the down part and that gathers is going to be that gathers is going to be 35 and um, 10 inches long and then the main length here so if the gathers is going to be 10 inches long if the gathers is going to be 10 inches long that means i'll be subtracting 10 from my 45 so i'm left with 35 inches so this part the a-shaped gown is going to be 35 inches long so now from the shoulder line i'll come here and mark my 35 inches so here's my 35 inches i'll just be adding one inch for my hemming allowance because we need to fold the a-shape we'll understand why we have this that's why the fact that we're going to have gathers the gathers will be top stitched on top of it it will not be joined to it or they will not be sewn, sewn together, they will be top stitched on top. I hope we understand my language. 
I'm going to place it on top of it and top stitch my gathers. So now on the chest line is where I'll be entering the bust measurement. A bust measurement is 52. 52 divided by 4 will give me 13 inches. So 13 plus 2 inches for my sewing allowance. So this is it. So I have this now. So I'm going to just get my ruler. So I'm going to get my ruler and then connect it to this point. Take note of my two inches here. So I'll just draw it down this way. So can you see my A shape? Can you see what I have? So you don't really need your waist measurement and all that. So you just connect it or even your hip measurement. You can see how it slants this way. So now I'll come here to the midpoint of the armhole by folding my tape into two like this. And then I'll come in by half of an inch. This is for the back armhole. And then three quarter of an inch for the front armhole. I hope you can see my chalk markings. So I'll slant it back to the shoulder line like this. And then the front armhole too, I'm going to slant also back to the shoulder line. So can you see I have two lines here. Then I'll bring my curve and then curve it this way. So can you see from this half inch, I'm going to curve it to meet the bust measurement. And then I'll also place it from this three quarter of an inch to meet the bust measurement also. So this is my front armhole and this is the back armhole. So I'm also going to be drawing both the front neckline and the back neckline here. So now the neck width I'm using, the neck width I'll be using is four inches. And then the neck depth for the back will be two inches. Also, the neck depth for the front, I'll be using a neck depth of 5.5 inches. So I'm just going to curve it. I'm using a neck width of four inches, a neck depth of 5.5 for the front. So this is the front neckline. So for the back, I said I was going to be using two inches, but I'm going to just change it to one inch. This is because I want to have a button loop at the back. I want to have an opening at the back to create, to fix a button there just to allow the head pass easily and to give it a stylish look at the back. So this is now my back neckline. So we are done with this A-shaped gown. So all I need to do is to cut on the back lines, on the back markings. After cutting on the back markings, I will place this piece on, I'll, by fold, I'll fold my fabric and place this piece and cut out exactly the same thing before I adapt this into my front piece. So I'm cutting on my back neckline. The shoulder slant, then the back armhole, which is the first armhole here. Front, same piece. There you go. I have my second piece. So this will now be the back piece. So I'm just going to shift it away so that I can now cut the front neckline my front piece can you see so now to cut the flare that's the gathers that will be on the down part I need to measure what I have here so whatever I have here I'm going to be multiplying it by 2.5 So the total figure I have here is 38 inches. So 38 inches, I'll be multiplying 38 by 2.5. And then the length of the gathers I'll be cutting. Remember I said it's going to be 12, 10 inches long. So I need a hemming allowance of two inches and then half inch for placing it on top of this part. So that means everything I'm looking for is 12.5 and then 
38 times 2.5 will determine the width or two. You can multiply 38 by two depending on the amount of fabric you have. My fabric, I have two pieces. I have one will be for the front and the other will be for the back. So what I have here, I noticed that my fabric will not be enough to give me times 2.5. So what I have here is, let me place on fold so that I can measure it. So everything I have here is 37 inches, so which is like times two, okay? So that's what I have. So I have two pieces of this. So for the hem now, I'll just fold half inch, then one inch, so that I can have a bold hem. You can do fold half inch, half inch. So now the next thing we'll be doing, we'll go ahead and cut out our sleeve. So I'm just going to keep my pieces aside. So this is what I have, the leftover of my fabric. I'm going to be folding it diagonally. That's unbiased this way. So I'll come here to see the armhole I'm working with. Let me measure the total armor. Remember, it's 9.5. So, but we already added our sewing allowance. So, let's just go ahead and measure the total armor. The things we're going to be fixing that sleeve into it, so it has to fit in. So, everything I have here is 14 inches. Remember, I'll be joining the shoulder with half inch. So, that's that will be 13.5. So now I'll be looking for 13.5. Let me get my chalk. I'm just going to come here and check. So here I have my 13.5. So can you see this? So I'm just going to draw a line here. I just want to draw my sleeve cap. If you don't know how to draw, I just need to have the basic sleeve cap here. So if you don't know how to make your basic sleeve, I'll be dropping the link in the description box. So this is what I'll be doing. So I'll just come up this way. Just do that. And then the length of my sleeve, length of the sleeve is I'm going to be using the elbow length. And our elbow length is 13 inches plus folding allowance. So that will be 15. So here, I want to also come here and have this line so that I can mark the seam 15 here. So here we are. So I'm just going to connect this 15 like this. So I'll come here, cut the sleeve tab. Just to create the shape that you need to create. You don't really need your basic sleeve pattern just to have the shape. So now this is what I have. I just remember that I'll be attaching a band to it. So can you see? And we need it to fold a little. So I'm just going to be increasing this length that I have here by I'm going to be increasing this length that I have here by four inches. So I'm just going to mark four inches. This is because I need to fold it. So I need it to be puffy so that when I fix the elastic band, it will just form that cone shape. If I had left it at this point, it would just give the exact sleeve length, so it would not allow us fold it to give the nice shape that we are looking for. So, I have one of the sleeves. So this is what we would have. Can you see? We'll gather it to form this cone shape. So can you see that it's not really long? By the time we fold this, so this is just the length we are going to have left. So I'm going to place and cut the second one. In my second sleeve, I have the same thing now. So the next thing I'll be doing is to cut the facing. So I folded my fabric. Can you see this is my leftover fabric? So I folded it over. And then I'll go ahead to cut my facing. So you can give it any shape you want. I'll go ahead and cut the shoulder slant like this. <clears throat> and then the next line so this is just me tracing out what I want 
So I'll come here now, raise it up since I now have the shoulder slant. So you can come and create any shape you want. So I want it to go down this way. Whatever shape you want, that's fine. So this is the facing. So can you see? This is what I have. So I'll be using it to turn the neckline or to sew the neckline, to trim the neckline. So for the back now, I'm going to place my fabric. Let me go ahead and iron the facing. So for the back, it's going to be a little longer because it is going to have button loop at the back. It's just going to have a button. So that opening, I need to make that opening a little long so that her head can easily pass. So I just want to pin this down. So I'll also trace out the neckline like this. The shoulder line. Okay. So I haven't done this now. I can go ahead and take out this. So I then create the shape I have. longer so this is what I have this will be for my back facing so you can see I have my crease line I'm going to slash it open I'm going to slash it up to like five to six inches let's use five that's fine so just going to slash it up to five inches so here's my five inches so that the head can pass through. So now we're done with our cutting. Remember I said I had three yards of fabric. So this is just what I have left. So three yards is just perfect for this tile. So depending on your size though. So now the next thing to do now, I'll take this to my sewing machine, place my facing on the right side of the fabric because you want to turn it to the wrong side. I'm going to sew the neckline this way on half inch this way this way this way and then this way so this is what i'll be doing on half inch i'll take this curve this way this way create a v-shape and then come back this way half inch and then this way so that's what i'll be doing for this one so for the front facing too i'm going to turn the front facing just the same way i'll be doing for the back facing placing it on the right side so I've gone ahead to fold the hem of the sleeve. Can you see what I did? I just folded one inch. I wove it first before folding. So I'll be fixing elastic to this, to the hem here. So what you need to know the measurement of the elastic you'll be using. The round elbow of my client is 14 inches. So 14 inches, I'll be subtracting two inches from it. Okay. So when I subtract two inches from it, I'll be left with I'll be left with 12 inches. So that's what I'll be cutting for my elastic. So now this is where my 12 inches is. So I'll just drag it so that we can see. Can you see how much it can stretch? So you don't want it to stretch too much. And you don't want it to be too loose. So I'll be using her exact round elbow measurement minus two inches. That will be fine. That will give me what I'm looking for. So I'm going to cut on my 12 inches. So I have two of this. I'll insert it into the hem. So I'll just keep it aside. All you need is a safety pin. I'm going to fix a safety pin here and then insert it. I'll show us how to do that. So let me keep this aside and then show us the back neckline. So for the back now, I also went ahead to weave the facing. Can you see my neckline? Remember I said I was going to be sewing on half inch, then this way, and then this way, and this way. So now I want to slash, remember that I slashed only the facing open. I didn't slash the main fabric. So I'll go ahead and slash the main fabric. So you want to come down here so that it can allow it come. You have to be very careful so that you don't cut your thread. So all you need to do is to just notch properly. 
So then I'll flip it to the right side. So, can you see? Can you see? So now, take look. Can you see that I have, I have this loop here? So instead of just using elastic and leaving it like that, it's not really going to be nice. And then it's always nicer when you use the fabric. Can you see how beautiful it is? So this is just what I did. I'm going to show us since I've done it already. It was to cut a piece of fabric. I folded my fabric one inch on fold this way. And then I cut a length of five inches. That was what I did. A length of five inches. Having cut the length of five inches, I took it to my sewing machine and I sewed on half inch so that will leave me with half inch i turned it out that's i turned it to the right side so i turned it to the right side i ironed it and then i cut elastic of two inches just two inches so remember that my fabric is five inches long and my elastic is two inches long all i did was to use safety pin to insert the elastic into the loops so that was how i achieved this result can you see how beautiful it looks so of course because it is five inches long so that is why it gathered to give this nice effect so this side i'll have my buttons my button sorry my button this is a single button on this side so when i was sewing it i placed it on the right side of the fabric and you see it's in between the the main fabric and the facing so i placed it in between and i sewed on my half inch so that is why i have it hidden here in between the both of them and can you see it starts exactly where the neckline started from so i came down by half inch before fixing the loops i hope that is clear so now i'll go ahead and notch the neckline all you need to do is to just cut tiny cuts here make sure not to cut your thread line going to do the same thing on this side so here we are so now for the front let's keep this aside so for the front now I'm going to also notch round the neckline so you want to make sure that you don't cut your thread line so if you are not used to doing this, please, I would advise that you use the tip of your scissors. Just make sure that your scissors is sharp so that you can just use the tip and not cut your thread line. So, having done this, so now the next thing I'll be doing is to turn it to the right, the wrong side, and then press it. I'll also do the same thing for the neck, the back neckline also. And then I'll take it to my sewing machine and join the shoulder. So I'm just going to show us how to fix the elastic before I go ahead to fix the sleeve to the armhole. So I have my safety pin here. This is my safety pin. So you want to fix your elastic into the space created or the channel created for the elastic so i'll come here now can you see i've pinned my elastic to the safety um, to the safety pin so then you come and start pushing it in like this so you make sure that you are watching your elastic to know where So can you see? So now that I've gotten to this point, I'm just going to pin this point like this. So so that the elastic doesn't just follow in and then all aim will be defeated. So can you see? So my elastic has come out through this side. You want to just pin it also to make sure that the elastic doesn't fall inside back. And then you remove your safety pin. So can you see what we have? So this is what my sleeve is going to look like when I shape it. Can you see it will fall nicely to give me the cone shape here. 
So what I'll be doing, I'll take this to my sewing machine and just sew this side down, just top stitch this side, and also top stitch this side too. So I'm going to repeat the same process for the second sleeve. So I'll keep that aside, and now I'll show us how to join the shoulder. I've joined one side already. So now this is my front piece and my back piece. This is facing, facing two for the back piece. All you need to do is to place them together like this. So now I'm holding the front piece, the front facing and the back facing. So now this is the main fabric for the back. So make sure that you align it with this part that is stitched here, that's here at the center, and then flip the, the back piece to the front like this. So when you flip to the front like this, you go ahead and pin it. This is so that it remains intact. I'll take it to my sewing machine and sew on half inch this way. So when I sew on half inch this way, I'm going to have the same result as I have here. So can you see this is the wrong side of the fabric? Can you see how neat the shoulder is? And this is what it looks like too on the right side of the fabric. So I'm just going to take it to my sewing machine and then top stitch that and then sew it down like this. After joining my shoulders together, I went ahead to fix the sleeves. Can you see? So and then I also went ahead to shape it on one inch. It's just the same thing we've always done here. So it's just to shape on one inch. I sewed on one inch all the way down. So now this is the hem of my outfit. Can you see I wove it really neatly because this is how I want it to be. So let me turn it to the right side so that we can see the next step will be taken. So now I've turned, I've turned it to the right side. So now this is the fabric I'll be using to do my gathers. I folded the hem. Remember that I added a hemming allowance of 1.5 inches. I folded the hem. So this is the upper part. Can you see? I also went ahead to weave it and then I did my gather stitch. What do I mean by gather stitch? I used the longest stitch on my machine to do this, to make this stitch. And I have two of them here. So remember that this piece of fabric, we cut two of them. One will be for the front and one will be for the back. So can you see where I joined them together? So take note of where my gather stitch, I have two of the stitches. This is one rope here, and this is the second rope here. This is because I want to place it on this side. Remember I told you I was going to top stitching the gathers. I want to place it on this side so that this stitch will also align with the side stitch that I have here. I hope we understand. So that's why I have two gather stitch. So I'm going to gather this to the measurement I have here at the hem of the front and then gather the other one to the same measurement because basically we have the same measurement. As you can see the way they are, I have exactly the same measurement on the hem here. So I'll be gathering it to the same thing I have here. So let me measure what I have here. So everything I have here is, is 35 inches. So I'll be doing my gathers to 35 inches each. So at the end of the day, I should have 70 inches. But this is where our demarcation is. So this front, this one with 35 inches, this one too with 35 inches. So I'm just going to pick my gather stitch and start gathering it. So this is how I'm going to gather it. Pick it like this. Can you see? And start dragging it little by little. Can you see how it's forming the gather stitch for me? So you want to be very careful so that your thread does not cut. If not, it will be back to square one. It's usually not easy. And then remember, I'm working with it. It's easy if you are working with a soft fabric. I'm working with Mikado and it's quite thick. So you just want to do this carefully. So I'll keep gathering it till I get to this end here. Remember that I have two ends. So I'll gather it till I get to this end here where I have the joining. And then I'll measure, I'll make sure that I have 35 inches. I'll do the same thing for the other side. Okay? 
So I'll continue gathering and then I'll show us the outcome. Okay, so I'm done gathering it. But I had to use my needle and thread to gather it because my stitch, my thread was busy cutting up and down. Because I'm using Mikado satin, you can see it's quite thick. So this is how you use your needle and thread to gather it. You just thread your needle, make sure that you double it. And then you start fixing it in like this. Can you see what I'm doing? You fix it in this way, bring it out this way, fix it in this way, bring it out this way. You want to do it as close as possible so that you have tiny gathers like I have here. You know, you keep doing this, keep doing this till you have enough. Till you have enough. So after fixing your gathers, your needle that way, make sure that you tie the end here. You make sure to tie it so that that's if you are still because in our case we are starting at the beginning so if you are replicating exactly what i'm doing just make sure to tie it so that you can now start gathering it can you see what it's giving me so you now start doing your gather see that simple okay just tie just knot it a little so that it doesn't pull out while you are doing your gathers do it in a way that you can loosen it when you are done okay so now that's exactly what i've done here so this is my side seam Remember that I added, I left one, I added one inch for my hemming allowance. So I'm just going to come here now and place my fabric. This is the gathers fabric. I'll be taking out this stitch when I'm done. So I'm going to place them side by side like this. Can you see? This is so that the side seam will align here. So I'll pin it here. So you can see that my fabric is quite thick. So I went up by one inch to pin it. I can eyeball one inch. If you cannot eyeball it, just mark your one inch. So I'll do the same thing at this side. Oops. So at this side, I'll also go up by the same one inch. So that is here, you can see. So I'll bring the side seam also of the gathers and then I'll place it over it like this. I want to make sure that it's the same one inch because remember that I'm doing it side by side so that they will all align. So here I have my one inch, my one inch here, very important. So now you can see I've pinned the two sides now. So all you need to do now is to place it like this. It's going to be easy now. You can see you just maintain a straight line and then start pinning it. So you do the same, just shift. Make sure that your gathers are even. You see how I'm pinning it? So you do this till you get to this end here. Okay, you see? So I have exactly what I need here. Just make sure that you are making your fabric, your gathers even, so that one side is not more than the other. Can you see? So, I am now at the end here. I'll just pin this last one. So, exactly what I've done here is what I'll be repeating on the back side. So, I'll do that and then show us what we have. So this is what I have after pinning. So and I've also done the same thing for the other side. Can you see? So taking a look from inside, you see that I went up by one inch. So now I'll take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to be sewing very close to the tip, like quarter of an inch 
away from this tip just quarter of an inch away from this tip so i'll do that and come back and show so i'm just going to sew all the way around the gathers okay so can you see i've top stitched my gathers this is what i have came out really nice and then i've done the same thing for the back so i'm just going to go ahead and remove the gather stitch so you can remember i said i was going to sew quarter inch below so you can see my old stitches here that's the gather stitch on my thread i'll just go ahead and take them all out so you don't want to drag this so that it doesn't keep holes on your on your flare on the down and the gathers so you just want to take them out gently so this is what i'll be doing i'll just give a space of like three inches and cut it so it's easier to pull out three inches than to just pull a long strip so that you don't give unnecessary holes to it so i'm going to do that then press it and wear it on the mannequin if you have watched this video to this point and you have not subscribed please what are you waiting for kindly kindly subscribe to my channel like this video share with your friends and do not forget to put on the notification bell so that you get notified when i post a new video so i'll be ironing this outfit and then wear it on the mannequin so that we'll see what it looks like that way you have an idea what it will look like on a human being so here we are can you see how beautiful our dress turned out it came out really beautiful check out the sleeves the hem everything about this gown is unique i hope you enjoyed watching this video please kindly comment like this video subscribe to my channel do not hesitate to share and also don't forget to put on the notification bell see you in my next video bye